Sup boys. So today's video is something that I've debated a lot about making. I thought about it for the past couple of days. Should I make it? Should I not make it? And ultimately what it came down to is that I thought this is the right thing to do. This is what I had to do. And today I want to talk to you all about racism on Twitch and what I think can be done to prevent it, at least as much as possible. And obviously this video has been created and inspired partially by the protests that have been going on around the U.S. and also to a lesser extent around the whole world about police brutality and racial inequality. And this is something that I do feel very strongly about, but instead of making a milk toast video talking about how much I don't like police brutality, which I clearly don't, obviously don't, you would hope that I don't, but I would rather make a video and talk about the corner of the internet that I do have a little bit more understanding of and really try to offer my insight on how to make that little bit of the world better. And so that's what I want to do today. Now, before I get into the video, I do want to say one thing, is that this video might bother some people or it might trigger them or whatever you want to call it, uh, because you might view it as being an SJW video or something like that. Rest assured, it's not. I think that uh, this is an issue that affects everybody. It's not necessarily an SJW issue or anything. I think I want to do the best thing for the most people and do what's right. And so if you disagree with what the video is about, please just listen to the video, listen to what I have to say. And if there's something that you don't like, write it in the comments and I'll listen to what you have to say too. I have no problem having a conversation and discussion about this because ultimately my goal is just to make the platform and the space better. So anyway, I think that Twitch and the users and the streamers have been playing hot potato with racism for about the past three to four years. Uh, Twitch passes the burden and the responsibility off to the streamers, they pass it off to the users, the users pass it off to Twitch, and the process repeats itself. Twitch has made uh, streamers responsible, and then streamers ban the users, and then the users complain to Twitch. So ultimately, whose fault is it? Well, everyone's. It's everyone's fault, it's everyone's responsibility in their own way. So the first thing that I want to talk about is a tweet that Dr. Disrespect made uh, yesterday or the day before. This is basically talking about how there were these different publishers, game publishers, that would do these reveal trailers and these dev uh, you know, interviews and just different content that they post as a live stream on Twitch. And the chats in those different live streams would be full of racism and other types of negative and just generally degenerate things. So why does that happen? Well, it's clearly not because Bethesda is a racist company or EA is a racist company. It's because there are organic users on Twitch that have racist intentions or at the very least are just trying to troll and get a rise out of people. But the ultimate outcome to this is that you're watching a trailer and you've got a bunch of people spamming kill black people on the sidebar and it makes the game look slightly shittier. It just makes the experience worse. So what is the solution to that? I think the solution is, you know, the best solution as always the best solution costs the most money and takes the most time, which is you have Twitch talk with these different publishers and either assign moderators to dealing with their stream or have Twitch create a moderation bot that's much more aggressive in timing things out and maybe have some kind of like AI learning with the bot in terms of learning different combinations of the N-word and different types of racial slurs and just racial things to say and try to cut down on that as much as possible. And that's clearly what takes the most effort. Twitch has to do something, the developers have to do something, uh, everybody has to do something. Uh, at the very least, I do think the developers could also uh, hire somebody just to moderate the chat. But realistically, if you have 50,000 people, 100,000 people in a chat, 200,000 people in a chat, it's going to be impossible to moderate everything. It's just the reality of things. There's just so many messages happening so fast. So what are other abilities that Twitch has to prevent this from happening? Because again, it makes the publisher look bad, it makes the user base look bad, and it makes Twitch look bad. It's a lose-lose situation for everyone, and it's something that nobody wants to have happen, except for people who just want to see the trolling happen and people get mad. Which I can understand, but it's obviously not something that we should promote. So uh, clearly what I think should be done is that uh, these different publishers could just uh, stream in emote only mode. And if they stream in emote only mode, that's going to prevent anybody from typing any words that are at least bad. Now you're going to have racist emote combinations, which are things that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes here, but it's much harder to create those and the meaning is often lost to a lot of people who don't really fundamentally understand the website. So what I think the best solution is, besides doing emote only mode, which again is probably going to cut down on about 80% of it, but once one person finds a combination that's as racist or offensive as possible, then everybody else is gonna type the exact same thing 
and you ultimately have the same problem that you originally did. And I think that the the worst solution that does completely get rid of it, but does also make the content a lot worse, is to just remove the chat. Uh, I think that uh, Twitch could give different partners and these different publisher uh, accounts the ability to do live streams with chat disabled. And I think that's something that obviously does make the live streaming experience worse for the viewers, but it does also make it better if the chat is bad. I think that having a, uh, having a bad chat is worse than having no chat. I would rather have no chat, and I think that anybody from a PR perspective would agree with me there. So I think that's probably the, uh, it's the most heavy handed, but it's also the most directly effective solution that I think is the best stopgap stop gap in, uh, in lieu of not having moderation. So that's one thing that I think Twitch is responsible for and something that I think also the publishers are responsible for that should never happen. It makes the game look like shit, it makes the community look like shit, it pisses people off, and it's just generally a negative experience for everyone. Second thing I wanna talk about is emotes. And I'm gonna talk about a number of different emotes and the way that they're used and the negative uh, racial stereotypes that they promote. So the first one is try hard. Now, try hard is probably the most enigmatic one because it has such a long history and the history has been changed and uh, it's very complex because try hard itself doesn't really fit the different, uh, the different I guess like form or the different set of like criteria that I have for the other emotes and why I think that they're used racially. But I do think that just because of its history and the way that people have used it, the CX community used it back in the day to uh, you know, promote racism, it's just been tainted through really no fault of its own. It's just an unfortunate, uh, it's an unfortunate outcome. And I do also wanna talk about two more emotes and that is Mingli and uh, Anel. Now, Anel is used very clearly. If you've been on Twitch, you know what this is. Somebody says bomb, somebody puts Anel in chat. Somebody says, uh, y you know, good at math, somebody puts uh, Mingli in chat, right? You've got the Anel is an Arab stereotype or a Muslim stereotype, and Mingli is an Asian stereotype emote. Now, why are Anel and Mingli used in this way? I think it's actually very obvious. It's because Anel and Ming Li don't display any direct emotion. And basically, emotes are used to convey an emotion or an idea. And in the absence of the emotion or an idea, the emote is taken literally, in this case, at face value. So the emote becomes a manifestation or a representation of that race, of that individual, and of what that individual looks like, rather than the emotion that the individual is conveying, because neither of the emotes really convey an extremely strong emotion in the same way that emotes that people use regu regularly on Twitch do. So uh, examples are Wall W, uh, Pog, Keck W, uh, Weird Champ. All of these emotes have very defined emotions they're trying to convey. And because of those defined emotions, they're not used at their core value of just, oh, this is a white person or, oh, this is a black person. It's used to convey the emotion that the person has. It's the same as Zool Lull, which is the uh, basically a uh, Lull W in blackface, uh, which is really... It's really what it is. I, I didn't even realize, I, I literally just said that and I realized, yes, it's basically it's Lil W in blackface. Um, and uh, it, even that is still not used in the same racial way that, uh, that Try Hard is. So I think the reason for that is clearly because the uh, Ming Li and Anel emotes don't, uh, don't convey racism, uh, sorry, don't convey an emotion. And so they're relegated down to their face value and their appearance. And that's really what matters. So what can Twitch do about this? Obviously, um, you know, like the, the clear solution is to remove the emotes, but I think a better solution is to put them on a rotation. Now, what I mean by that is by creating a rotation of these different emotes, you're able to, uh, I guess, remove the connection that people have created over the years of the racist connotation of the emote, and then using that emote to display that racist connotation. So for try hard, for example, if I say black, people put try hard or they put come on, bro, right? Come on, bro is, uh, come on, bro is kind of not as bad, but they're also just, they're both stupid racial, racial emotes. But I think try hard is, is a lot worse. And so I'll just talk about try hard. So if somebody says steal, they put try hard. If somebody says welfare, they put try hard. They say 
uh, you know, any racial stereotype, any, any negative racial stereotype about black people, they're going to put try hard. So what do you do to prevent that from happening? Well, what I had to do personally was I ended up just disabling the emote and blacklisting the emote so people couldn't put it in my chat anymore. Now, I've had some people come out and say that, well, if you do that, then other people are just going to find another black emote to use instead. And so I do have another number of other black emotes that are in the global list and then also the, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, the ones that I've enabled, right? The amazing emote, which is the Jesse Lee Peterson one from whenever he was debating with Destiny and whenever Destiny would say something, he'd say amazing, right? And so I took the emote, I thought it was funny, and so I put the emote on my chat because it was a funny emote and Jesse Lee Peterson is black. And whenever I say monkey, maybe one person, one person or two people might put the amazing emote after I say that. You know what my mods do? They permaban them. They just ban them. And then they put in the mod note, put the blackface emote after he said steal or after he said uh, monkey, and then that's it. And they don't get really unbanned for that. And I think that a lot of it is people thinking that they're clever. They think that they're funny because they have this, you know, this next level, you know, ability to correlate stealing or monkeys with black people and they think people won't notice it. It's very clear that this is what's happening. And I think that it was honestly one of the reasons why I banned it is that people were just so fucking intellectually dishonest it pissed me off. I knew that they were doing it to be racist and they were like, oh, you're banning black emotes? You're a racist. And I'm like... What the fuck? Just get the fuck out of here. And so, uh, you know, that was part of why, why it happened. But at the same time, because uh, going back to what I'm saying is that tryhard has that connotation that's been created and reinforced by the community for years. But any black emote, any blackface emote does not have that established connotation and correlation. So whenever you replace tryhard with another emote of a black person, you don't have those many people, that many people drawing that connection and trying to do the Marco Polo thing that they do. Uh, you know, in Twitch chat, it's like if you say uh, blue, people dance game. If you say uh, gotchi, people put gotchi gasm. Uh, or suck somebody's dick or something like that. Uh, Twitch emotes are very much a game of Marco Polo where you say A, they say B. So whenever you remove A, or sorry, you remove B, so you say A and then they can't say B, there are very few people that go to C. And then there's even less people that go to D. So what ended up happening is that I had a reduction in the amount of people that were drawing these racist, racist connotations with the black emotes to black stereotypes about, about over 99%. Like, whereas I used to have it happen constantly, anytime I would say anything, now there's like one person that does it a day. Like, if that, it's extremely, extremely rare. And because of that, it's basically gone. Obviously, you can never get rid of all of it, but the idea that, oh, well, if you remove that emote, they'll just use another emote. No, they won't. Most people that are racist like that are fucking stupid and they don't have a plan B. The only people I wish they have a plan B for was their parents. So anyway, the point that I'm getting at here is that removing the emotes and preventing that kind of stuff from happening is something that is good for everybody and it makes the chat generally less negative. And I do think that streamers should be having a certain responsibility of preventing the stream from being negative. And I think that it's a big difference. I'm going to go and turn on the light. It's got a little bit dark in here. It's a very, very big difference here between forcing positivity and enabling negativity. And I don't think that forcing positivity is necessarily a good thing, but I think enabling negativity is also not a good thing either. So I think that you should look at making sure that you're not creating or allowing and enabling tools that give your chat the ability to harass other people. And this is just all about being a toxic streamer and you know all of that kind of stuff. And I'm not gonna get into too much of that in the video, but I am going to say that with these emotes that consistently have these racial, uh, negative racial stereotypes associated with them, one of the best ways that Twitch can do to prevent that from happening and prevent, make it happen less 
is to create more emotes that have the same, uh, you know, black people in it, Asian people in it, Indian people in it, however many other type of minority people in them, and have those emotes actually conveying a strong emotion. And hopefully people in the community will be able to latch on to that and use those emotes instead. And the racial connotation of the original emote will be lost or watered down. That is a best case scenario. And I think that's what Twitch and the different streamers should do. I think streamers should be looking if they say black all the time or steal all the time and their chat puts try hard. Everybody knows what they're trying to say. Like, don't, don't be fucking stupid. Everybody knows what they're trying to say. And I say monkey, and you see a bunch of tryhards. Wow, what a coincidence. Open your fucking eyes, turn on your brain, and realize what's happening. Figure out a way to stop that. If the answer to that is by blacklisting the emote, I think you should do it. If the answer is talking to the people and saying, listen, this can't happen, I don't want it, it's bad for my stream, etc., then do that. It's a better solution, but it's not as effective. Do whatever it takes because it's just not something that's good for the platform, period. Enabling negativity, period, I think is bad for the platform. It doesn't really matter who it's about or anything like that. It will make the platform worse in the long run. So the next thing that I want to talk about is by creating and having streamers and Twitch have a closer relationship in community building. Now, streamers usually don't have a very close relationship with Twitch until Twitch tells them they're doing something wrong. And what I think Twitch needs to do is whenever they see have an algorithm or something like that that will show if you're banning this many accounts from, uh, you know, off the website for racism, and then you have like a correlation between this many accounts and a certain amount of watched hours on certain streams, you know, look at how many viewers that stream has. And if that's, uh, you know, like if it's abnormal for that stream size for that many people to be watching it who are getting banned for racism, I think you should watch that stream. Twitch should watch that stream and see what is it that's causing this stream to be a conduit for people who are getting banned for racism. And sometimes it's nobody's fault. It's just the way things go. But other times there are different things that that streamer could be doing even without knowing that is enabling people to be racist or negative or uh, whatever in their stream. So I think Twitch needs to have a more hands-on and a more, uh, not punishing the streamers, but working with the streamers to make the platform better. And I think the best thing that they can do that is educating the streamers and teaching them different things that people use to, you know, coded language that people use and other types of behaviors that do indicate racism, especially for people that don't necessarily have all of the context of, you know, like racial stereotypes in America. There's plenty of people who are growing up that might not really know oh, well, black people is monkeys and like, you know, it's like the, the racist thing. There's people that don't really get that as clearly as somebody who's American has or many people who are American would, would understand. So being able to identify those things is not always a fault of the individual who doesn't identify them. Sometimes it's just a difference in culture. And so Twitch needs to go over there and figure out why this is happening, make sure the streamers understand it, and then hopefully work with the streamer to find solutions to prevent it from happening. And obviously that takes more work. And that's ultimately what this comes down to, is that if Twitch wants to remove racism from their platform, they have to put in work. They can't just throw the hot potato over to the streamers and say, this is your problem now and you're responsible because it's happening all over the platform with different places that have no previous like context to them at all. It's just a, it's a review or a release trailer or something like that. And it's getting this kind of shit on it too. So making sure that you're able to prevent that kind of stuff from happening is absolutely Twitch's responsibility. And it is their platform first and foremost. And just throwing the burden off on other people is not a good idea. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is also something that I think Twitch could do better, is making sure to avoid tokenism and other types of, uh, like, corporate diversity. And I think that we've all seen a number of examples of Twitch doing this recently. And I do think that doing that, it, it, it's actually very selfish in a way, and I want to explain why, is because whenever they put somebody in the spotlight and this person isn't necessarily ready for it or 
you know, they do it because this person is, you know, there are certain, uh, you know, it's a diversity checkbox basically. And they put them up and they give them a platform and they expose them to all of these people. Well, some of those people aren't ready for that. And you see that happen with a number of people who are put in a very, uh, you know, a very public space that they're not used to. And I think Twitch does those people a disservice by putting them in that public space, knowing that that's something that could happen to them. And obviously it's not their fault. It's nothing that they did wrong, but I think Twitch does need to be a lot smarter with the people that they platform and the people that they promote and making sure that they do it to people who have like the mental ability to deal with that kind of stuff. Because it's very easy for a lot of people who have never streamed or anything to say, oh, well, just don't read the comments. But whenever you're getting hundreds of negative comments of people telling you that you're fake or you know you have unearned success or something like that, uh, it can really wear on a person. It, it even bothers me sometimes. And I have a relatively thick skin, or at least I think that I do. And I, it can bother anybody. So I think Twitch needs to be very smart about the people that they're promoting and the people that they give platforms to as well, because they don't want to unintentionally create that person, or sorry, put that person in, basically make a target out of that person. They don't want to make a target out of that person, even if it's in, done in good intentions. And I think that's something that Twitch needs to realize and prevent from happening. Ultimately though, I think that just to summarize everything, what really should Twitch do? I think they need to make sure that they have better communication with publishers and making sure that the chats in a different publisher's live streams are moderated or at least gone, and maybe, uh, if that's what it takes. I think also Twitch needs to create more emotes that are uh, minority emotes that convey strong emotions so the emote is not taken at literally face value. And I also think Twitch needs to talk with streamers that are having a large propensity of racism or negativity in their stream and work with those streamers on uh, tools and practices and techniques to remove that and also avoid tokenism and putting people in the spotlight in ways that might put them in harm's way or basically make them targets of harassment. And I think those are all things that Twitch can do and also streamers can do because streamers obviously need to call this stuff out too. And as a streamer, this is the last thing that I want to talk about. It's very easy to just dunk on somebody who's racist. You just call them, you know, a redneck, stupid racist, or call them an idiot or something like that. And it doesn't help. It really doesn't help. It might feel good, but it does not help. What's always going to help is sitting down and you might have somebody who's a big, dumb, fucking idiot racist. And you find out that this person was just bullied by a black kid in high school and it's some residual trauma. And I think you can talk that out with some people and really bring them to the table because just alienating and excommunicating people only goes to radicalize them more. I don't think that banning somebody from a chat is going to make them less racist. My goal always is to make things better, not to do what I think is justice. Like I, I don't, I don't, I care about justice, of course I do, but what I view as true justice is doing what's best in the long run. It's not doing what makes me feel good, it's doing what I think is best. And talking to somebody and figuring out where they're coming from and having a genuine conversation with them, even if you know that they're completely wrong, can actually make the difference. And I think as a streamer, if you know some of your more loyal viewers are saying things like this that you feel are wrong, I, I, I think that many of them would probably not even mind having a conversation about it and open up to that person and try to see what they have to say. I've done that for a number of people uh, in, in my time with uh, viewers and also people in my WoW guilds. And I've sat down with them and I've explained, you know, hey, this is why it bothers me. This is what I think you could do better. This is why it's not good. And many times it actually helps. And it takes a lot more effort. It's harder to actually talk to someone, hear their point of view, and really try to work with them and make them a better person. It's much easier to ban them and joke about them and shit on them and dunk on them and that's it. That's because it's it's not an easy problem to solve. Racism is not an easy problem to solve. These bigotry issues are not easy to solve. To solve. And that's why you have to try harder. You can't just do that. Sometimes you can do it, it's fine. But don't do that and think that you're making a difference. You're not. I think that it's very important to know that, and it's something that I've learned as time has went on, 
and it's actually really helped me change the opinions and the hearts and the minds of many people. It's not going to work with everybody, but if it works with some people, it's better than working with none. And that's always the way that I've looked at it, and I think that I've done my part, and hopefully I have with this video. So uh, thank you guys very much for watching. This is something I've you know, felt very strongly about, which is why I've made a 25 minute video. I've re-recorded this three or four times. So I really hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you appreciate it and I hope it's helpful. And so guys, please let me know in the comments other things that you think Twitch can do, streamers can do, users can do, and how to make the platform better overall. So thank you guys very much for watching. I really fucking appreciate it. And uh, it's pretty much all I've got. Peace.